today's subject is called God's will or God's desire for us. God's will or God's desire for us. The Bible makes it very plain in the scripture that the thoughts I think before towards you are thoughts of peace, not, not to destroy us, but to encourage us. And the Bible gives us God's will in the book of 3 John, verse 2. Let's turn again to 3 John and verse 2 as we go to the scriptures. And this weekend is going to be a power-packed weekend as we talk about the gospel of health. Amen? We're going to just kick off this weekend as we talk about health, of just talking about God's will and God's desire for us. The spirit of prophecy tells us that Satan or disease, let me just let me make sure I read it. This is from Ministry of Healing, page 112, I believe it is. Um, the spirit of prophecy says that sickness, suffering, and death are work of an antagonistic power and that Satan is the destroyer. But I thank God, she goes on to say that God is the restorer, amen? So as we talk about the gospel of health this week, we don't want to so much focus on how bad disease is, but we want to focus on how powerful God is, amen? And on tomorrow, we're going to talk about some stuff that's going to really be a blessing to each and every one of us. And we're going to talk about the effect on music on your health. Have mercy. We're going to talk about it tomorrow evening. And on Sunday, we're going to talk about biblical strategies towards reversing diabetes. We're going to show you biblically how the medical missionary work is the antidote to all of our ills. The Bible says in the book of 3 John, verse 2, Beloved, I wish above how many things? All things that thou mayest what, somebody? Prosper and be in what? Health, even as thy soul what? Prosper. We, the Bible talks about a prosperity gospel, not the prosperity gospel that we see common today in the fallen churches, but a prosperity that is the result of obedience to God's law. What do you say out there? And brothers and sisters, one thing that we must have come to grips with, it is God's will for us to be prosperous. Amen? But it must be, must be prosperous his way. Amen? And the Bible says he wishes above all things that we may prosper and be in what, somebody? Health. So part of your prosperity is that we walk in the health that God has ordained for us to walk in, even as thy soul prospereth. Now, we do believe in soul prosperity because when you are prosperous in your soul, that means you're born again and you're spiritual. So we believe in soul or spiritual prosperity. Amen? But if we, if we believe in soul prosperity, we should believe in the prosperity of our health, that it is God's desire that we all prosper and be in health. Amen? Let's look at the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 29. Deuteronomy 29 and verse 29. I want to read to you a scripture in Deuteronomy 29 and verse 9, excuse me. Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 9. The Bible talks about the conditions of our prosperity. Brothers and sisters, I, I have settled it in my mind that because God wants me to be prosperous, I shall seek to live a prosperous life in Jesus. Amen. Jesus said in John that I come that you may have a life and that you may have this life more what somebody abundantly. And I believe that abundant life is also dealing with our health as well. And we're going to talk about the conditions of our prosperity as it relates to our health. And I believe that these conditions relate to every aspect of prosperity, whether it be prosperity in your relationships, in marriage, career, spirituality, church, and every phase of your life. I believe that this verse here outlines the conditions of our prosperity. But tonight we want to focus on our health. The Bible says in verse 9, Keep, therefore, the words of this what, somebody? Covenant. Who gave those words? It was the wise and infinite God. God made us. The scripture says we were fearfully and wonderfully made. He ordained laws within our being that if we obey the words of this covenant, what happens is we give God the permission to sustain us and even in cases of sickness to help us regain health. Amen? So that covenant is a health covenant. Are you with me? Keep, therefore, the words of this covenant, and then it says, and do what to them? Do them. So not only keep it in your mind, not only having knowledge of what to do, but God says to put them in practice in your life, to put them in practice that ye may prosper, and how many things, somebody? All things that ye what? And do. So in all that you do, God says if you put him first and obey his will and obey the words of this covenant, brothers and sisters, God says that we will prosper in everything that we do. Does that include our health, brothers and sisters? 
The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1, turn me to Joshua chapter 1. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1, we're talking about God's desire for his children. Brothers and sisters, when it comes to your health, it is, your, it is God's will for you to be prosperous in your health. If you got cancer, you want some, you want some health prosperity, amen? If you got sickness and disease ravaging your body, don't you want some health prosperity? This weekend, we're going to show you how to regain health. And brothers and sisters, as God has helped me to embrace the medical missionary work, as a, a minister of the gospel, I'm telling you right now, God is teaching his children, and God is preparing his church to give the loud cry of the third angel's message. We're hearing about medical missionary schools opening out all over the world, all over this country. And not only that, there are prayer lines having medical missionary schools on the phone. Let me tell you this right here. God is preparing a people. Why? Because we're told in, in the book, Councils on Health, page 533, that soon there'll be no work done in ministerial lines but medical missionary work. So therefore, we must start preparing for the end. Am I right or wrong? Not just in our characters, but also in the work and service to others. Sister White goes on to say in Councils on Health that there'll be many sick ones all over this land, in our church and outside the church. And if we embrace the medical missionary work, we will find a job anywhere. We'll find a field to labor anywhere, meaning that the medical missionary work is a recession-proof job. What do you say out there? So let me tell you, there's no such thing as being broke and being a child of God. There's no such thing as being broke and being, uh, being jobless and being a ch child of God. Yes, there are people that create jobs, but let me tell you this, as a medical missionary, you have a job. What do you say out there? All you got to do is market it. All you got to do is go forth in faith and go out there not claiming to, have, to be some glorified um, person that can heal all your maladies, but as a humble servant of God. Are you with me? And letting people know that I'm not a doctor, but I love to give, love to do natural remedies. And God will move upon the heart of the honest in heart to receive your services and also to support you as you go forth in the medical missionary work. And as a seven-day Adventist minister, theologian, and medical missionary, I'm letting you know that there is a biblical way. What kind of way? Biblical way to treat disease. Ellen White says there are many ways of practicing the healing art. But there's only one way that heaven approves. Amen? Amen. And, and I read in one of her statements, we're looking at Joshua in just, in just a second, there's a statement where she says, not one of the medical schools in this world that are highly exalted by men are exalted in heaven. Let me say it one more time. She said, there's not one medical school, are you with me, that is patronized by the world's greatest men that is recognized in heaven. And we pay so much of credence to accreditation and stuff like that, not to get into that issue, but the spirit of prophecy is in essence saying that these medical schools in the world that are teaching these allopathic ways of treating disease with drugs and things that are killing people, they are not accredited by heaven. Are you with me? So the, 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 the program that is accredited by God is the simple eight natural laws of health, and I want to let you know that these laws of health are divine. Amen. And when you put these remedies into practice, we are told in inspiration that you will see supernatural results. So as a medical missionary, brothers and sisters, I'm not going around claiming to cure anything, but I'm here to do a supernatural work. What do you say out there? And we're going to show you this weekend on how to supernaturally reverse disease. What do you say out there? I'm just excited. Are you? The Bible says in verse 7, the Bible says in verse 7, only be thou strong and bury what somebody? That thou, Joshua chapter 1, verse 7, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which my servant Moses commanded thee, turn not from it from the right hand or to the what somebody? Left, that thou mayest what somebody? Prosper whithersoever thou what? Goest. And not just to the promised land in the Old Testament, but also to the promised land of health. What do you say out there? So as we, try, as we strive to go and remain in the promised land of walking in health, brothers and sisters, it is contingent upon obedience to God's word. What do you say out there? And by, by watch this right here, by, by walking in obedience to God's word, we are aligning ourselves with the God of health. Amen. Sister White says in the book, Medical, Mission, Mission, Medical Missionary, Medical Ministry, I think it's Medical Mission, Mission Ministry, she says that when we sin against God, we throw ourselves out of harmony with the universe. Are you with me? When we sin, we throw ourselves out of harmony with the universe. 
How does that relate to sickness and health? Let's talk about it. We talked about um, prosperity. It's God's will for us to prosper and be in health. So the question is, what is prosperity? Brothers and sisters, prosperity is nothing more than as the natural result. The what kind of result, somebody? The natural result of obedience to God. Amen? If you want to be prosperous economically, the Bible says six days shalt thou what? And do all thou what? See, the Sabbath commandment is not only telling us to rest, it's also telling us when to work. Are you with me? So if you put God first and work the six working days and you work diligently, you should prosper financially and economically. Am I right or wrong? So what happens is, is this right here from an economic standpoint as well as a health standpoint, says prosperity is the result of obedience to God's laws. So let me ask you a question. What is disease? What is sickness? Now, we know what Sister White says in Ministry of Healing, but let me put it in a nutshell. Disease is the natural result of disobedience. Can we agree with that? Amen. That sickness or disease is the natural result of disobedience. Can we agree with that? But let me ask you another question. What is health? Health must be the natural result of obedience. Amen? Where did we get that from? Let's look at Exodus 15, 26. Let's look at Exodus 15, 26. We're going to look at some scriptures here. I love the word of God, don't you? Amen. Now, the Bible says in Exodus 15, verse 26, listen to what the lovely Jesus tells us in the scripture on how to do medical missionary work and how to be in health. I know some of you know it by heart, but let's look at the book of Exodus 15 and verse 26, because let me tell you this right here. I do not have a medical license. Are you with me? Amen. And all most medical missionaries, Brother Ben, do you have a medical, do you have a medical license? No. But what happens is the Jesus says that we're called to preach the gospel. Am I right or wrong? And these signs shall follow them that what? Believe. And we shall lay hands on the what? Sick and they shall what? That's the only credentials we got. Am I right, my brother? That's the only credentials we have. I have we have the heavenly credentials. So we have to do it on biblical terms. The Bible says in Exodus 15, 26, and he said, if thou wilt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy what, somebody? And will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his what, somebody? In other words, if you just do as I say, I will put none of these diseases. I will not allow you to have the diseases which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that does what, somebody? Healeth thee, a true understanding of medical missionary work, a true understanding of the gospel of health, lets us know that God is the healer and that it comes to obedience to God's laws. Therefore, true health, what kind of health, somebody? Is a result of obedience, natural result of obedience to the law of God. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the what, somebody? Commandments of God and the faith of what, somebody? Jesus, even in the remnant church, medical missionary work, true health reform will go forth in the name of the Lord. Now, I want to just read you something from manuscript number one, 1888. And this is also found in Councils and Diets and Foods, page 446. We must understand, we talked about health, we talked about the result of obedience to God's laws. We got to talk about the root cause. Somebody say the root cause. We're going to talk about the root cause of why people get sick. For, most, for the most part. We're not talking about somebody sneezing on you or you have an accident and you get sick. We're just talking about the diseases of lifestyle that commonly afflict mankind. Sister White says, carefully prepared instruction is to be given that indulgence in fashionable intemperance, what word was that? In eating and drinking may be seen as the cause of disease. Did you hear that right there? That intemperance in how you eat and how you what, somebody? Okay. How you eat and how you drink is the sure result or cause of disease. And brothers and sisters, you, if you really look at a lot of diseases, one way or another, intemperance is somewhere in there. So the way to restoration must be through temperance. But watch this right here. How do I know this? The first sin. We understand the first sin came through eating. Am I right or wrong? And we know that that was an intemperate act. Am I right or wrong? 
And if sickness is a result of transgression of the law of God, then we can all trace it to intemperance from the first intemperate act that God, that man did against God, which opened the door for disease and sickness of every kind to afflict mankind. Listen to this right here, Ministry of Healing, page 114. Ministry of Healing, page 114. The Spirit of Prophecy says, when a physician sees a patient suffering from disease by improper eating, drinking, and other wrong habits, and yet neglects to tell him of this, he is doing his fellow being an injury. Drunkards, maniacs, those who are given over to licentiousness all appeal to the doctor to declare, to, 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 to declare clearly and distinctly that suffering results from sin. Those who understand the principles of life should be earnest in striving to counteract the causes of disease, seeing the continual conflict with pain, laboring constantly to alleviate suffering. How can the doctor hold his peace? Is he benevolent and merciful if he does not teach strict temperance as the remedy for disease? Brothers and sisters, I think we found the cure, amen? That strict temperance in all things as a remedy for disease. And of course, the laws of health go hand in hand with that. Now let's define temperance for a minute. I did some study and I found that temperance means moderation in action. What in action, somebody? Moderation, we got to live now, but we can't go too far to the right and too far to the what, somebody? There has to be a balance in our life. Moderation in action, not just action, but in thought, have mercy. Not just in action, but in feeling, have mercy. And somewhere we read in the spirit of prophecy that your thoughts and your feelings make up your moral character. And tomorrow afternoon, especially for our young people, we're gonna show you the practical results of temperance and intemperance as it relates to the music that people listen to and the effects on their physical as well as moral health. You need to come out tomorrow afternoon for that. Brothers and sisters, another definition for temperance is habitual moderation in the indulgence of the appetite or passions. God gave us passion. He gave us appetite. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, they must be controlled. Are you with me? Amen? They must be controlled. They must be habitually in moderation. Let's go on. Moderation or abstinence from the use of alcoholic beverages. So brothers and sisters, we understand temperance in essence as being in moderation of those things which are good. And while we're being moderate in that which is good, temperance also teaches to abstain from everything or every practice that is harmful. By doing these two things, what happens is we can bring our body back into alignment with health. How do I know? On Sunday, we're going to do a thing on how to biblically reverse diabetes. Through intemperance in some things in my life, I started having high blood sugar issues, and my blood sugar got so high to where if I'd have been diagnosed by a doctor, he would have said I had a disease called diabetes. But what happened was is that through strict temperance, through what, somebody? And to temperance alone, God was able to reverse it by 80 points. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Back to normal. But hold on now. The Bible says intemperance, go and sin what? meaning that health must be maintained by still strict temperance. Are you with me? Somebody say, well, Dr. O, you, you believe in this in person? Yes, I did, but I was, uh, I was cheating on some things. Are you with me? And sometimes what happens, the Bible said we read tonight, not only must you keep these words in your heart, but you must practice them. Are you with me? There are some people who know better that because they think they know, oh, I'm better than other people, I don't really got a following, everybody else got a following, then God starts allowing symptoms to come up, and then God says, you're not immortal, you better put my laws in practice. But I'm a living witness that when you are strictly temperate in your habits of lifestyle, God will restore your health. We'll talk more about that later on. I want to read to you some statements from Spirit of Prophecy, and we're going to be turning it over to our next speaker very soon. Um, Ministry of healing. Do you believe in the spirit of prophecy? Do you believe that God called this woman? Amen. God, God did call her to give prophetic words to the church today. Reading from page 113, the spirit of prophecy says, the words spoken to Israel are true today of those who recover health of body or health of soul. The Bible says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. She goes on to say, 
that the desire of God for every human being is expressed in these words. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. God's desire for every person in this room is what we just read for our scripture reading. I know that there are people who die in sickness. I know that there are people that um, you pray for them and you, do, you may do natural remedies and they may still die of sickness. But I'm telling you this right now, it's not up to us, it's up to God, amen? Oh, when he should heal us. Had a dear friend, breast cancer, did the natural remedies, still died of cancer. But let me tell you this right here. Did the promise of God fail? No, God sees the end from the beginning. And sometimes God may have to allow some of us to die in order to save us. Are you with me? And when she rises in the first resurrection, and thank God that she died in Christ, amen? When she comes up, she will have breast cancer no more. Therefore, the promise of God is fulfilled in her life. And let me tell you this right here. So whether it's in the next life you get complete healing or in this life, I believe 3 John verse 2, amen? Let God be true and every man a liar. And I want to say this to you, even though it may not be God's will for some to get healed, I believe it is his will that a lot of folk get healed, amen? I believe, that, I believe that there are diseases and sicknesses right now in this room, out of this room, that God is waiting to heal through the touch of a hand of a medical missionary. The Bible says, it is he who forgives all of our diseases and who forgives all of our iniquities, who redeems your life from destruction, and who crowneth thee with loving kindness and mercies. Ellen White goes on to say that when Christ healed disease, he warned many of the afflicted ones, go and sin, what somebody? Less or worse than come unto thee. Thus he taught that they had brought disease upon themselves by transgressing the laws of God, and that health could only be preserved by obedience. Do you see this right here? God's will is for us to prosper and be in health, but we must understand that God is calling for us to be obedient, to put his laws into practice. When, it's, when, when, you, when your flesh desires for you to eat that thing or do that thing that you know is going to cause disease and sickness, love for God through strict temperance says, no, I'm going to push the plate. I'm not going to buy that product. I'm not going to commit that act. And let me tell you this right here, by doing that on a habitual basis, Obedience becomes habitual, amen? Obedience becomes a delight. Oh, I delight to do thy will, O oh God. Thy law is within my heart. Psalms 40 and verse 8. Brothers and sisters, we can have that, we can have that uh, propensity. We can have that experience if we start now in Jesus. Ellen G. White says, the physician should teach his patients that they are to cooperate with God. To do what with God? In the work of restoration. The physician has a continually increasing realization of the fact that disease is the result of sin and that he knows that the laws of nature, as truly as the precepts of the Ten Commandments, are divine and that only in obedience to them can help be recovered or preserved. That's the reason why I can call myself a medical missionary without a, a license. Why? Because this thing is divine. Are you with me? And it is our job as medical missionaries, as the Spirit of Prophecy says we all can be, to go forth in the ministry. He sees many suffering as the result of harmful practices who might be restored to health if they would do what they might for their own restoration. They need to be taught that every practice which destroys the physical, mental, or spiritual energies is sin, and that health is to be secured through obedience to the laws that God has established. Notice this right here, for the good of all mankind. These laws of health that we talk about, these laws of health that we know by heart, it's for our good. Not just for diabetes, not just for cancer, not just for any high blood pressure. Brothers and sisters, just from a lifestyle standpoint, are you with me? Even if we wasn't sick, God's still giving us wise laws for us to follow. And brothers and sisters, our obedience could be so close to God to where by when we obey him, which is following our own natural impulses. And let me tell you this, our bodies truly are the temple of the Holy Ghost, amen? And we are to care for it by being obedient to the laws of health. I love this right here. When a physician, she says here, um, let it be made plain that the way of God's commandments is the way 
of life. God has established the laws of nature, but his laws are not arbitrary exactions. He's not just saying, just do this because I say it. The Bible says, thou shalt not, whether in physical or moral law, implies a promise. Did you hear what I just read? Every thou shalt not, or if thou shalt not, whether in physical or in moral law, implies a promise. If we obey it, Blessing will attend our steps. Amen. Laws of health, nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, temperance. Brothers and sisters, these divine laws applied to your body, your lifestyle, will attend with a blessing. God never forces us to do right, but he seeks to save us from the evil and lead us to the good. Let attention be called, page 114. Let attention be called to the laws that were taught to Israel. God, who? Gave them definite instruction in regard to the habits of life. He made known to them that the laws relating to both physical and spiritual well-being and on condition of obedience, he assured them that the Lord will take away all sickness from thee. Is that talking about cancer? Is that talking about HIV? Let me go further than that. It's about, is it talking about um, Lou Gehrig's disease? It's the Lord that does this. Brothers and sisters, it is time to give our lives to the Lord. Are you with me? Amen? If there is somebody that's sick, I know that you've been praying, some of you have been praying and laboring for a long time. But this time, can you just give it to the Lord? Say, Lord, this is your body. If there's a man with prostate cancer, maybe you're having a large prostate, can you just give your prostate to Jesus? And say, Lord, you created this prostate. And ask God to heal it. But God says, I will, but there's some laws that you need to be obedient to. Are you with me? No matter what the disease is, give it to Jesus. Because we know what to do with sin, amen? When you're sin sick, you give your sins to who? Jesus. When your car breaks down and it's a real serious thing, you have no clue how to fix the car, do you try to fix the car yourself? No, no, no. You call the tow man, or if, you, if there is no tow man, you push that car to the, that one who can fix it, amen? When you are sin sick, when we are sin sick, we are to give our lives to the one that created us, amen? When we are physically sick, we can do the same thing. Give it to the great physician, and God will bless our efforts. As I bring this to a close, I don't want to just close with something right here. The Bible says in the book of 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, God's will for us is to be healthy. Now, I, as a finite being cannot guarantee when God will do it, but brothers and sisters, I do believe, and I can guarantee you by putting his word in practice, whether in this life or in the life to come, God's word will be fulfilled. Amen? Hallelujah. The Bible says that our light affliction on this earth is only going to be for a moment. Are you with me? It may be those suffering with sickness for years, but compared to eternity, it's only going to be for a moment. And if you're saved, when you're saved, at last, saved from the presence, power, and the and power of in the guilt of sin. When we are in heaven living with Jesus forever, you will be living disease-free for eternity. Amen? Amen? Sometimes God may allow the thorn in the flesh, but let me tell you this right here. Even if there is a so-called thorn in the flesh, I'm still going to try and do some natural remedies. Amen? Come on now, I'm just excited now. Watch this right here. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse uh, 5. We're going to talk about how temperance is related to your moral walk with God and your salvation. And what you want to understand is, is that the health reform, watch this, watch this here. The health reform is a part of our salvific walk with God. Are you with me? Because when you are saved, when God saves you completely by his grace and not by works, the relationship between you 
God in your body changes. Are you with me? And therefore, you're not going to treat your body the way you once did when you was in sin. The Bible says in verse 5, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your what, somebody? Faith. Uh Uh-oh, you're saved by grace through faith, and faith without works is dead. So God says, yes, you're saved by faith, but you got to add on to that faith. The Bible says, add on to the faith. The scripture says, virtue. Amen? And to virtue, what else, somebody? Knowledge. Educate yourself. Better yourself educationally in your walk with God. And to knowledge, somebody calls it, what's the Bible call it? Temperance. Hello. Temperance. And to temperance, What's the natural result after that? Do you know that we're temperate and all I have is a life? We, that, could be a, that will be the cure for those who are impatient in this room. And mercy. But not just patience, but added to patience. What else? Do you know that by being patient, it leads to godliness? And to godliness, brotherly what, somebody? And to brotherly kindness, what else? Charity or love, for if these things be where? In you. Not just be in you, but what else, somebody? Abound, they make you that ye shall neither, ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is knowing God? Knowing God is the very things that God says we are to add. But let me share this with you. If we are intemperate, if we are intemperate, these things can't abound in our lives. And not only could we lose our physical salvation as it relates to our health, but we are in danger of losing our own soul salvation. Let's go on. The Bible goes on to say in verse 9, but he that lacketh these things is what, somebody? And cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his own sin, old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election what, somebody? Sure, for if ye do these things, ye shall never what? Ye shall never fall. And we know that statement from the spirit of prophecy. The church may appear as about to fall, but it will not what? Fall. It will remain while the sinners in Zion. I'm here to tell you, the sinners in Zion, that will be sifted out. I guarantee you a large portion of them never overcame intemperance. Are you with me? And let me tell you this right here. We are told that slaves to appetite will fail of perfecting Christian character. Are you with me? There is a work that we must commence right now. There is a work that must be done on a daily basis by the daily surrendering of our will to Jesus. And I want to let you know, verse 11 goes on to say, for an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, we can't do it by ourselves, amen? We can't do it by ourselves. There are some of us that have the I can't help it. The Bible says, come, let us reason what, somebody? together. It's a relationship. It's a covenant relationship between you and your God. The Laodicean message says that if you will open the door of your heart, I will come into you and will sup with you. And those that have had family suffer know that it's a relational time. So we can talk to God and we can receive a knowledge of God. We can grow in grace. But let me tell you this right here. Jesus understands the feeling of our infirmities, amen? The Bible, says we, the Bible says we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He understands how it is. He understands the gnawing of the flesh. He can relate to you, even though he did no sin. But brothers and sisters, Jesus, the scripture says, he suffered in the flesh being tempted, but he's able to keep you when you're tempted. Ministry of Healing, page 180. The Savior took upon himself the infirmities of humanity, and he lived a sinless life that men might have no no fear because of the weakness of human nature that they cannot overcome. If there is somebody, there are some issues of intemperance or indulgence to appetite in your life, do not despair. There is a Savior right now in heaven. Amen? And there's a savior in the room. The Bible says 
that he will be with us always, even unto the end of the world. Let me tell you this. We're told in the spirit of prophecy that you were brought into existence because you were needed. For God so loved the what? When a man loves a woman, when he loves the very ground he stands on, in essence, he's expressing, I need you. I can't live without you. Are you with me? God loved you so much, the spirit of prophecy says you were needed. Are you with me? And that should make you come to God. He that cometh, he that cometh unto me, I will in no wise what somebody cast out. But you've got to seek him because pretty soon he's going to make the announcement, he which is holy, let him be holy what? And he which is filthy, let him be filthy what? Still, character will be sealed very soon. But while their probation doors are still open, let us take advantage of salvation. Notice this right here. Christ came to make us partakers of the divine nature. Hallelujah. Of the divine nature. And his life declares that humanity combined with divinity does not commit sin. The gospel is good news. Amen. The new theology, this theology that says, oh, you're going to keep sinning until Jesus comes. Had a student tell me one day that a, a teacher told him that he doesn't even believe in character perfection. Brothers and sisters, I feel sorry for that theologian. Are you with me? Because the theologian, Ellen G. White, says that humanity combined with divinity does not commit sin. The, 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 the antidote to intemperance and sickness is Jesus. Amen. It is the uniting of our humanity, whether it's healthy or sick, combined with the divinity of Christ. And brothers and sisters, demons tremble at that name, Jesus. Demons tremble at the divinity of Christ. And I want to suggest to you that disease trembles at the presence of divinity through the laws of health. What do you say out there? Come on now. I'm excited. My last statement is found in Maranatha, page 224. Maranatha, page 224. I love this one right here. Everyone who, who by faith obeys God's commandments, are you with me? With, that's, that's the foundation of all prosperity, right? Everyone who by faith obeys God's commandments will reach the condition of sinlessness. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm excited. How about you? Everyone, she says, who by faith obeys God's commandments will reach, that's a guarantee, you will reach the condition of sinlessness in which Adam lived before his transgression. We don't know how many years or how much time it was that Adam lived without sin, but we do know he was connected to God, amen? Through the gospel of Jesus Christ, man connect. Divinity is reconnected to humanity. Are you with me? And as long as we continue to submit to that divinity on a not just daily basis now, moment by moment basis, are you with me? Our life unconsciously to us, but consciously to God, will reflect the sinlessness in which Adam lived before his transgression. Then in Bible Commentary, volume 6, 11, 18 says, they testify to their love for Christ by keeping his commandments. Story of a man in Huntsville had pancreatic cancer. And before he had, and I found, I found he had pancreatic cancer, a friend of mine said, yeah, he was a vegan. But you know what? I could have been discouraged by hearing that. But you know what I said to myself? God does not owe us life. Are you with me? I would rather die of every disease in the world and die in Christ. Are you with me? Being obedient to the laws of health than to live like some people live. People live to be 80, 90, 100 years old, perfect health. They transgress in all the laws of health, going to hell, as I say, in a gasoline suit. Are you with me? I'd rather go to heaven sick on my deathbed than be well and living in sin. It's not about the health matches per se, it's about our love and faith in Christ, which leads us to be obedient to the health matches. Are you with me? Amen? Brothers and sisters, I don't know what more to say. Brother Ben has a message for you, but tomorrow night we're going to show you a video. If we want to entitle it Hip Hop or Music in Your Health, 
come on out tomorrow. We're going to show you the correlation between health, temperance, and temperance in the music that a lot of these young people are listening to. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Father in heaven, as we close this message in transition, may the impressions that you desire to be made on this message will resonate with all those in this room. May sickness and disease flee before your divinity. So, Father, if there's anybody that's sick right now, may you, Lord, we apply the divine power through faith. We ask that you apply your divinity to cancer, diabetes, and may it flee right now in the name of Jesus and give us an obedient heart. Bless the word that will be spoken next in Jesus' name. Let everybody say, amen.